many members of Congress have a serious problem with the amount of money that federal employees are receiving. They want to cut annual pay raises, and they want to reduce retiree benefits. This is in a budget plan called Fiscal Sanity to Save America. Usually most government employees at the beginning of the year, they receive a small increase in their pay between one and 3%. This is to keep up with the pace of inflation so they don't lose buying power. But some years it's been 0%. And a lot of members of Congress, they would love for it to stay at 0%. What they would like to do instead is do merit pay raises. So only a small percentage of the federal workforce would actually get an increase at the end of the year based on your performance. Also, the federal government is one of the last organizations that offer their employees a pension, money for the rest of their lives. And it's a great benefit, but it has been eroding a lot within recent years. Before FERS, which is what we have now for our pension, we had the CSRS, which was way more generous. The government actually spends half of what they spent on CSRS when it comes to FERS. Then we had the contribution, right? So federal employees had to contribute 0.8% of their pay. That was before 2013. From 2014 onward, for the last decade, federal employees have been paying 4.4% for their pension. That means every pay period, you have 4.4% pulled out of your salary in order to go towards the pension. But they want to reduce the pension benefit even more. This plan is all about focusing in on balancing the national budget. This country has been in debt since 1837 or over 175 years. But apparently this can all change in seven years if this plan is adopted. The document argues that federal employees are overpaid compared to private sector workers by 17% on average. This is when you consider non-salary benefits, talking about the pension, health insurance, paid leave, things like that. But this is in direct contradiction to a study done by the Bureau of Labor Statistics that state federal employees make less than 27% than the private sector. So one of the problems of going towards more of a merit-based pay raise system is we don't know what percent of the workforce would be even eligible. Take a manager, take a hiring manager, 10 employees. Is it 20%? Are two out of the 10 going to receive a pay raise every year and the other eight are not? Is that how it's gonna work? We know that favoritism is going to play a role. It always does. No matter how much you try to eliminate favoritism, it's the individual that has the most charisma or who has the personality that's more compatible with the supervisor. That's the individual that more often than not gets the reward. So that's a concern as well. But by doing this, some people say that we could save up to $57 billion over the next decade. Next, they want to take away some of the paid leave. They say we're getting paid too much. Too much paid leave is going on. So if you don't know about leave, the way it works in the government, you get four hours every pay period if you just enter into the government for the first three years. You get four hours. After that, you get six hours. You hit your 15-year mark, now you're getting eight hours every pay period. So every two weeks, you earn one day, essentially, of leave. So they want to scale that back. They claim that we would save an additional $75 billion over the next decade by doing that. For federal retirees, they want to change up the calculation. They don't want to use high three salary anymore. Instead of high three salary, they want to use high five salary. That would reduce people's overall pension. Let's take an example. GS 13, step five, works in Washington, DC. How would their pension be impacted? Well, using high three, the person would earn about $28,000 a year. In the proposed high five salary, same person would earn about $27,000 a year. So that would be like an $800 reduction for your average GS-13 in Washington, D.C. In addition to that, they want to take away the cost of living increases. So right now, your pension every year, there'll be a cost of living increase added to it. They want to completely eliminate that. Then if you multiply that by hundreds of thousands, you can clearly see where the government would be saving billions of dollars. But here's the real shocker for new federal government employees. They want to get rid of the pension completely. They want to take FERS and just make it disappear. So a federal government employee in their ideal world would just have their TSP, their thrift savings plan, and they would have their social security. So no pension, reduce paid leave, no pay increases, 
What would be the incentive to join the public sector? What would be an incentive for a highly qualified, high skilled individual that the government needs, right? Think about cybersecurity attacks happening. We need cybersecurity professionals. Think about the medical workforce that we need. Think about there's so many positions in there that are crucial. And if you look at the population of federal workers, it's 2 million, but it's been at 2 million for over two decades. What's the population in the U.S. doing? It's increasing. Every year, the amount of people that live in this country has gone up, but our federal workforce has stayed stagnant. Oh, and they also want to make it easier to fire federal employees and reduce the right to appeal terminations. So this is a concerted effort in order to hollow out the federal workforce to reduce it dramatically. Because who would apply to a public sector job? Who would apply to a federal government job with all these proposals? It completely takes away the incentive. I, I don't even think this is serious. I really believe this is just strongly worded rhetoric to appeal to a certain base when we're looking at the conservative party. That's what this is. And many of these same proposals were floated through Congress during the last president's administration when Trump was in office, but they never became law. One of the government union's president was quick to issue a statement stating that the RSC would like to create ways to fire employees, reduce their pay, take away union rights, and remove new hires from the retirement system. Several years ago, a study was done to show how much money are we actually spending in the federal workforce when it comes to paying federal employees. And that number was about $200 billion. So how much is $200 billion? Look at this pie chart here. The amount we spend on federal employees, it's about 4%. Where else can we make that 4% cut? We see the biggest chunk is on Social Security and Medicare. We can't cut that, right? Entitlement programs, we're not cutting that. Right next to it is defense. Defense is at 13%. We spend more than triple on defense than we do on the federal workforce. Why are we spending so much on defense? You might argue it's to keep us safe, and I would argue that's ridiculous. How are we spending over $800 billion on defense? And look at the defense contracts. All, most of it's public information. You would see how many times we're trying out new equipment, new technologies, just to scrap it. Just... Overall, a lot of people would categorize it as wasteful spending. We have so many people and efforts internationally. We have international efforts to expand our defense footprint. And you have to ask yourself as a U.S. citizen, is it worth it? Are we getting the return on the effort and the billions of dollars that we're spending overseas? Or could it be better spent in this country? improving infrastructure, improving the social programs that already exist. Is the money better invested here at home? So I would say if you're looking to cut 4% from the national budget, I would start with defense. And I was in the military. I work with defense contractors on a daily basis. I've been overseas. I've seen where a lot of the money goes to. And I would say, start with defense. Now, I know, I understand a lot of politicians, a lot of people in this country, they despise federal government employees. They look at them, they view them as leeches, as just taking taxpayer revenue without producing any value. What do they produce? They produce nothing. I understand that argument. I understand that segment of the population that doesn't like it. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of value that can come from having the right people in the right roles in the federal government to serve the public and the public's interest. So, after all of that, if you're still considering a federal government job, you need to have a clear understanding of the federal hiring process. What goes into it from a referral to an interview to a job offer to you negotiating your salary. If you want to know more about the federal hiring process, I want you to watch this video next. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.